We we called a meeting to order. Jeff, would you mind three or four, man? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us together, Lord, as a community, as a group. Lord, we just pray that you'll be with us and guide us and protect us, Lord. Lord, we just pray that you'll help us and to make the right decisions, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for everything you do for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I say the pleasure to the I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We want to thank each and every one of y'all for coming this evening. Uh, we go ahead and get started with uh, approval of the agenda. Do we have any additions? Yes, sir. I've got you that packet with the big tall map on it. That's sure going to be your, uh, your Highway addition. 91 closure and detour map for truck financing, ACCG property and liability signature. Okay. Everyone get a we need a motion to approve the agenda. I make a motion to approve. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Approval of minutes. Did everyone get a chance to look them over? Any questions? Any changes? If not, we need a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve. We have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Approval of financial reports. Any questions? If not, we need a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve. We have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Appearances. Mr. Keith Bowen, elections. Mr. Keith, you want to come on up now? Oh, I'll be back. I'm going to stand back here. Okay. Yes. Mr. Dunn's passing out some information to y'all that's just been made available to us in the last few weeks. I don't know if y'all are familiar with it, but this is the, the, the Halderman Report. Have, are any of y'all familiar with the Halderman Report, which was released a few weeks ago? Mm -hmm. uh, this is a professor that was given a Dominion device in Forsyth County um, in the Curling v. Raffensperger civil action. Uh, that's the suit that uh, the Curling brought against the state of Georgia because they didn't believe the Dominion machine was reliable. So they gave a Dominion machine that Fulton County was using, gave it to him, and said, he'll have at it. And I've given all y'all a copy of the overview, the summary. His report is 96 pages, and I think you won't read 96 pages. Here it is. That Sherry's got a copy of the whole report, but this is the actual summary of it. And I'll hit some of the highlights for y'all. It says, Georgia's unique in using these ballot marking devices statewide. Most of the other states that use them, they come in and use paper ballots, but if somebody requests these, they can use them as a secondary. We're one of the only states that use them as the only way, primary way of voting. Uh, and then the principal findings down here says, this is the professor that did this. I demonstrated that these vulnerable vulnerabilities provided multiple routes by which attacks can install malicious software on Georgia's BMDs, about more devices, either with temporary physical access or they can offer uh, temporary physical access or remotely from election management system. I explain how such malware can offer votes while subverting all of the procedural protections practiced by the state, including acceptance testing, hash validation, logic, and accuracy testing. So the, the thing that he's proven is these things, and there's, if you turn to the second page, there's seven things he listed out that he has proven that can be done to these Dominion machines that can make your vote not what you cast it to do. And uh, this, in my opinion, the sad thing about it is the state of Georgia has had this report for over two years already. And a judge sealed it because the information on this report is so damaging to the Dominion systems, and it was so close to the election, he didn't want it to get out because it, it's got a pathway for people to come and to hack the system. Well, the two years has passed, and the judge says, I'm going to release 
it let everybody read it now. So he did this just a few weeks ago. And our state of Georgia has had this thing for two years. Our attorney general and our secretary of state has it for two years. And they list all the things that he, he didn't just tell them, hey, this is your problem. He said, hey, this is what we can do to fix the problem. And y'all want to guess how many things the state of Georgia has done to fix the problem? Zero. Zero. They've not done, they've not implemented a single thing this professor said needs to be done to fix the problem. And since this has came out, I know we, I probably talked to y'all to you, probably tired of hearing me, but I want to come back with this new stuff. Because there's, y'all have always asked me, is there a county in Georgia done it? Spalding County has. The Spalding County Board of Commissioners has voted five to zero to not use Dominion machines anymore to get paper ballots. Tomorrow night, they also have a Board of Elections that work hand in hand. Tomorrow night, the Board of Elections are going to come and vote on the same thing. So they're, and from what my sources tell me, though, the Board of Elections are going to vote the same way. This is not a Republican thing. This is not a Democrat thing. They are, there's a group of people around Atlanta, I the exact county, but there's a couple of Democrat ladies that are fighting hard trying to get this done. We've got uh, Mr. Jolly here. He's from Grady County. He's the GOP chair from Grady County. They are fighting hard wanting to get these devices done because they are not safe. The information can be hacked. It can be changed. And I, I was careful to come to y'all. I didn't want to say anything that could not be proven. I didn't want to go with computer conspiracy theories or anything, but this is a professor that went and got the machine and they told him to see what you can do with it. Him and another fellow went back and they hacked all this stuff. They can counterfeit the little cards that you get that you put into the, they can counterfeit them. He said, I, I counterfeited one of them and went there and poked them in. And he said, you can you can change votes between the working devices and where it goes. You can change the whole system in county. As long as you get in one device, you can change all of it. And, and that's what I'm coming to y'all saying, that these things here, they're not safe and secure. If this was your computer at home with your banking information, you wouldn't stand a chance. If, if, if your ATMs use the same kind of security, wouldn't nobody have no money to bank because they'd be folks stealing it all the time. And our votes are way more important than the ATMs in our home computers because our votes is what changes the direction of our country. And, and that's what I'm pleading y'all, asking y'all, let's vote on this because I want to see where y'all stand, where y'all... I've spoken several times, we've never gotten to a vote about it. But there, there's a county already done, and y'all keep asking about that. Spalding County Board of Commissioners have voted five and nothing to not use the Dominion machines. Their Board of Elections are meeting tomorrow night to vote against using the machines again. And there's a group of people up there showing them, they're going to have an example of how you can count these votes fast enough. That's what I want you to say. You can't count fast enough, hand count stuff. Um, and they're having an example of our Spalding County, and I can get the same folks to come down here to talk to y'all. And there's also a money saving aspect in this. The, if we vote paper ballots and decide to count by hand, it is cheaper than using the Dominion machines. And I've talked to Mr. Jerry a little bit about, about what our cost is. He said our biggest cost here is the technician you have to hire for Dominion that stays here. He says that's, that's the one that's really, really costly like that. So if you don't use your machines, guess who you don't have to have? You don't have to have a Dominion technician. And we've already brought up to y'all that in one of the, I think it was the 2020 election, uh, when one of the Dominion, the Dominion tech was downloading our information to a thumb drive, it got corrupted. Some of our stuff is, is gone. The actual ballots are still there, but the ballot images are corrupted. And that's what we're, as citizens, are eligible to be able to get this the ballot images. There's some of them we can't get unless they rescan. So these machines are causing way more problems than they're fixing. And now just coming forward and I, I ask y'all please I don't want to take a bunch of time where you can't but these this summary here and, and if you want to go this the um Parliament report is you can get it downloaded and read the whole thing but I like looking at the back at the summary. I don't like to read all that where for and where to's and all that stuff. But these things here, uh, his main conclusion, these ballot marking devices are not sufficiently secured against technical compromise. Next, the, the ballot marking devices can be compromised to the same extent and used 
as or more easily than the, the old ones that these replaced. So these are as bad or worse than our old ones was. These things have not done anything except cause people in Georgia to lose confidence in their elections. And, and that's what it boils down to. If, if you don't have confidence, confidence in your elections, you are going to stop the going and voting. Because if you don't, and how many folks have y'all heard after the last election, well, I ain't going to vote no more. I ain't no use to Because they done got figured out who's going to win. And that's an easy attitude to have when you see all the stuff that, that went on in all these counties. And and in our, let's see, this, in the 2022 20, election, in our state, a person in a, in a county commission office was in third place. And they got to look at, hey, I know I voted for myself. I don't have a single vote here. And they checked and they won. How can we have confidence in our election officials, in our election process, in anything, if we don't have confidence in how we vote, that we'll be, it will be counted the way we intended it to. And that's what I'm coming at. We got a couple more folks going to speak tonight about some of the older stuff and then some of the legal process. But, but ladies and gentlemen, this is an important thing in our county and in our state. And we have it easy here. We're a small county. We don't have a bunch of people. And guess how many precincts we got? Got one. You ain't got them all over the place. Everybody comes to call. Everybody votes here. It is simple to fix it here. We, well, can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> Legally, does the state mandate us to vote a certain way, or can we can we legally vote paper ballots? You can vote paper ballots. Well, I think Miss Heather is going to speak to that in just a minute. But you can leave, you can choose how you want the vote to be, it's impossible or impractical. And what we're seeing is with the, with all of the uh, things that the, the this Haldeman report's brought up, it has led to us to believe it is impractical to keep voting on a system that you know is flawed. It, you know, it, the Bible says, not the Bible, excuse me, the, the, they say that if you keep doing the same thing, it might need to involve them too. They say if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, expect these different results. That's the sign of insanity. And, and we're keeping voting over and over again on a system we know that's flawed, expecting it to be correct. And, and you, it appears, I can't say you know, but it appears that our top elected officials, election integrity is not how they're listed. They've had this for two years. And they, after this came out, they went to our Secretary of State, Rappensburg, and asked him, when are you going to put these corrections in place? He said, after the 2024 presidential election. So we got a whole other election cycle before they even address this problem. Here. And that's not a problem I'm willing to, to hope that gets fixed. When we, can, we know how we can fix it right now by doing simple things. That, let's, vote, let's use the absentee ballots for everybody to vote on. We've got a paper copy. And, we, and, and you know, they said that when we went and we did a, a recount in such such county, it didn't come back right. But when they do a recount, if they get scanned it again, you still don't know if it matches up what's printed out on the thing because they're reading that QR code. And that QR code breaks our Constitution. The, the judge, Amy, Amy Totenberg, that this was in front of, she said in her ruling that the QR code on our ballot breaks the Constitution of the state of Georgia. It's illegal. And we're continuing over and over again to go against our own Constitution by using these ballot marking devices. And, and that's that's the bottom line there. We're, we're doing things that's unconstitutional against our own Constitution that we swore to uphold if you're an elected official, that we swore to uphold. And we know it and we continue to do it. And if, if a county calls the Secretary of State office and says, hey, we want to vote paper ballots. Can't do it. Okay. Why do you say you can't? Why, why, what legal precedent do you have that says I can't? When, the, when the, our Constitution says if it's impossible and impractical that you can change the way you vote on a county-by-county county basis. Whenever this professor, somebody got a lot more smart than I do, did a... a a deep analysis of it, and just found multiple ways these can be hacked. Just it's not just one way; it's multiple ways they can be gotten into by one bad actor. And, and it was such a, a devastating report. He sealed this report for two years because he's scared it would make people be scared of the way they were voting. And I don't know what led him to 
to open it up now, but I thank the Lord he did because we can see, and it's been two years when our state knew everything that was in here and chose to do nothing about that. That it appears to me like it that shows the intent of their heart that they don't care about election integrity. And the folks that I've talked to, all the people I know, they are very, very strong. It doesn't matter if they're Democrat, Republican, Independent. That is the main thing they want is election integrity. That if if I vote for somebody and and I my candidate doesn't win and I know that vote's fair, hey, I need to do a better job politics and more. May I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Uh, you say Spalding County is making a move to change, correct? That's right. Now, are they going to require this to be statewide or just individual counties it, to make up their mind? On, on a county by county basis. It's not a statewide thing, but it, the way our Constitution reads is if a county finds a problem with it, and see, every county is different in their election department. We don't have a board of electors, uh, we have our county commissioners does does that job. Mr. Jerry oversees the, the handling of the election and does Josh is the boss of all of it. So we're both, all candidates are a little bit different and the way we work is y'all have to say so about how to do it. And their board of commissioners voted five to zero to do this. Tomorrow night their uh, board of electors are going to vote and they're, they're supposed to have the votes to pass it off. So. And so they're going to be the first county in the state of says hey, you know, we're going to let our citizens have what we they it because the, the lady in Spalding County was one of the ladies that we've all seen on videos to work during the 2020 election. It showed what they were running ballots, they were getting different things each time. So she, she knows, she's one of the ladies in the in the government, and she knows these things aren't safe. She knows for a fact these things can can change the way the folks are written. And that's why I'm coming to this plea with y'all. That's, you know, and, and like I say, I think Ms. Sherry's going to speak some, Ms. Heather's going to speak some. That, that when the first county falls, it's going to make it, because like y'all are at, and not, I ain't doing rocks at y'all, but it's easy to be the first to be anything. It's, it's sort of scary to be the, be the first to be anything. Sometimes I get a hot shot and sort of do them a little bit. You know, we the South, we look at chaos and hogs and stuff like that, and that person gets burned, gets looking, it's hard to make that last leap. But it looks like a candidate's going to make that last leap. And when that happens, there's going to be more and more and more that's going to be doing the same thing because I bet if you checked your constituents, they want to, for their vote to count the way they intended it to be counted. And, and that's all we're asking for. We're not, I'm not coming as a, as a Republican, a Democrat. If, if you voted communist, I want your vote to count the way you cast it. I think you're wrong, but I still, that's the basis of our freedom in America. It's for our votes to count the way they were cast. And if they don't, we're going down the fast. And if we don't have the belief and the, the knowledge that when I go and vote, my vote will count, that that will cause what we've got now, where folks want to quit coming out and vote because they think it won't make a difference because they've already got the winners picked out. And that's what I've heard. And I've been everybody in here sort of multiple times. It don't matter how I vote, it, they've, got, they've got the winners picked out. And, and that's what we're fighting against. I, I want it to be where... I go to vote, and if my man don't win, I should have helped harder, or I should have passed out more pamphlets, or I should have talked up more. Not, well, it's them machines. You know, that's what if I've heard that once, I've heard a million times that it's them machines. A bunch of times that's a cop out, but this time, with this report, all the things I thought might be happening, this report here is in record at a courthouse. That this is what a professor that got a hold of about a vote. Dominion machine from Forsyth County, Georgia, that went and they told him to do your worst at it, and he hacked that baby 10 ways from Sunday. He got into it and he made it stand up and dance. And that's the kind of stuff that's going on with using these machines when we can correct it by just going back to the paper ballots, where, you know, we can sit there and we can count it. And if there's a, a question about, was it right? Hey, let's go back and count them again. It's not. We're not depending on QR codes like I've told you before. I think Ms. Heather's going to bring it up. You can't download an app on your phone. You can't get anything to scan that QR code and read what that scanner is reading. It's a proprietary technology that nobody here has that ability to do it. And our Constitution says whenever you cast a vote, you've got to be able to read your vote. You can read them names, but that machine doesn't read the names. It reads that QR code. 
and that's what all of this is on. When, when that QR, the QR code can say one thing, and their names can say something else, and we will never know. It. It's, it's beyond our ability to, to have that kind of knowledge because that's a proprietary thing. And that, that's what I'm, I'm pleading, y'all. Let's, let's get serious as a county. Let's get serious of upholding voter integrity. And let's vote to change these things to where if somebody comes up and says, well, I believe I got more votes, I'll take them again. We'll, we'll kind of look and see. We'll, we can see right here. Because if you take them and run through the scanner, you still don't know. And we, we've heard of people, well, we run a, a risk limiting all audit. All and it, it said it came up, yeah, because you run it and read the QR code again. What you expect to get? When you get when you when you're reading some bad stuff and you read it again, it's still gonna be bad bad information. Like they, they say uh what on a computer you put trash in, you're gonna get trash out. So that's where I'm at with that with y'all and um, and this when you take your time and read this thing here, really read it, it's gonna shock you. And it and it should concern you that we've been using this technology for years now. Trust in our government that it is as good as can be. Spent all these, I reckon, hundreds of millions of dollars to get this stuff, and what we got is something that probably a, a third grader with an iPhone can hack and make it do what they want to. Because he, he's this thing here lists seven ways that they were able to break the integrity of these Dominion machines. Seven different ways they could get into them to change stuff physically. Uh, by a jump drive, making counterfeit cards you can stick in there. I mean, he com he completely, he didn't get a card, and he made a card himself and put it in there and got it to read it and change votes. That's the kind of stuff. We, I, as a citizen of Middle County and the citizen state of Georgia, I don't find that acceptable at all. We should demand higher standards from our elected officials. And I ain't just, I'm not throwing rocks. Y'all been more than fair to me to be able to come here and talk in front of you. But I'm talking about our state officials aren't taking this as serious as it needs to be taken. And until we as counties take up and start doing the things that we can do and make them address it, and that's what starts happening with Spalding County. When enough counties start doing this, our Attorney General and our Secretary of State is going to have to address this. They, they can't keep whistling through the graveyard for 10 years they can be all right. Because this, this report, when it came out, I'm telling y'all, this is a devastating report on the failure of our devices that we're using to count one of our greatest freedoms we have as our freedom to vote. And if we don't get serious about it, that freedom is going to keep getting diluted down and diluted down and diluted down to this work. And that's where we're headed to if we don't, as a county, as a board, as the judge, and as the well, it's Mr. Gary who oversees it. If we don't take this seriously and demand that we can do things to where our citizens can feel secure that they can come and vote and trust the outcome of their vote. Does anyone else have any questions tonight? Yeah, speaking for myself, I feel like I'm speaking for the rest of y'all. Please speak up. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, we have to be real careful about what we do. We've got to make sure that we're doing everything by the law. You know, that's what we have to, to look into with the county attorney to look into all this stuff before we make a move to make sure that we're within our you know, legal rights to do this stuff. It ain't that we question you by no means. Absolutely, please don't take it that way. When do we start? Uh, when we start making them? I mean, this is not. I mean. It, this is at the top, and we're the local, and it's supposed to start us making them do right. And what we're going to make them stop doing all this illegal? Because they're doing it illegal. Oh, yeah. And it's making it like, uh, well, I'm not going to get it. Yeah, I want, I, I, I want my vote to count. I understand your part, but they're illegally doing all this stuff, and they're just ramrodding that, old, that Constitution like it's just nothing to it, and they're making their own little laws that's against the Constitution. It's our place to stop that. Even with, with the laws we got, we got to stop them from breaking the laws. Because if they don't break the laws, why can't we do it then? Yeah. I mean, they're all breaking laws. Yeah, I completely understand what you said, Mr. Allen, that, that we've got to be careful and do things the right way. But, but what I'm saying, and it's sort of kind of sort of what Sherry's saying, if our Secretary of State and Attorney General, if they aren't careful about doing things the right way up there, too, 
who's going to call them on it? That's what I'm saying. If, if, if some county don't call them on it and say, hey, our citizens say this, we've got to get, because we don't have, a, nobody has a rule. There's not, not been a court case. There's not been anything that says you can't do that, but our Constitution says it does. And we've seen this a bunch of times where folks file lawsuits to have to prove a point that everybody knows they have to get precedent. So what I'm saying is it probably is going to come to a lawsuit, but we've got to, we can't avoid the hard, difficult things because it's hard and difficult when we're number five. Because if, if you can read the uh, Constitution and tell me where I'm wrong, please do. I, I won't. I'm never too old to learn. Please inform me of where I'm wrong about this. But I, we can get sections and codes, and, and I think that's what Miss Heather's going to bring us up here in just a minute that prove what we're saying is correct. That prove what we're saying is the right way to do it. And if, if the Secretary of State has a rubber stamp that says if a county calls won't do this, tell them no. Okay, but why? Why are you saying that? Why why can't when the when it says it's impossible or practical impracticable that you can't change the way you vote, you can't use paper ballots. Why is why does this not meet that standard whenever the professor in Curly B. Raffensperger took time and was hired? All right, see if you can figure out, can this machine, can you, somebody do bad stuff too? And he did, so oh yeah, he can do it. So that, that proves right there that it's impossible or impractical. If you can't trust what you're doing, if, what we all went down here in the South, and I, I bet I'm old enough to remember that when I was a young one, we had an a old Chevrolet truck, step side truck, and that was a good old, we drove that thing forever. Then it got where it was starting to break down almost every once in a while. You couldn't trust it to get to get you where you want to go and get you back. Guess what we did? We found something else. That's what these amended machines are. We can't trust them to count our vote. We, we, can't, we can't trust it. When you can't trust something, you got to replace it. you got to get something better. And something better ain't always more technology. Sometimes something better is getting that piece of paper and an ink pen and filling in a circle to where anybody can count. And and I, I agree with you, Mr. Al. I, I don't think that our county should do things that opens us up to lawsuits unless it's something that goes against the Constitution. Our county's been in enough lawsuits, probably like every other county. We, you know, you get tired of the county's getting sued again. But this is one thing I'd be proud to wear that badge if our county got sued to correct our voting ticket. That's one thing I'd be proud of. Most of us, I'd be saying, yeah, we, you know, oh my gosh, yeah, that's, that's more stuff, you know. But this here, I'd, I'd put it on flag and wave it. Yeah, we were one of the ones that got this thing going to find out, to get a decision made, can counties do paper ballots? And when the Constitution plainly says it does, the Constitution of Georgia plainly says that it is impossible and practical to vote on paper ballots. I want to go with uh, with Alan. I mean, I'm, I agree with you 100%. Um, I would love to do the paper ballots. I agree with you. Everything that you said, but I think I would like for the lawyer to look into it just to stay on the legal, just to make sure that the legal part of everything is, is taken care of, that he can look at it. And if it's a goal, I would I would be glad to vote for paper ballot. Well, what I'm going to challenge y'all on that, I can tell you what your lawyer's answer is going to be. He's going to say you can't do it. But I would like to challenge y'all then and say, why can't we? When our Constitution says this, because I can, I can near about, I'm not a a poem reader, but I'm about to tell you what I'm saying. Oh, no, you can't do that because people's call up and ask them. Oh, no, you can't do that. Why? Why can't I? When the Constitution says this, what is the reason why? Because our Secretary of State has, has got a bunch of folks who are scared to bring lawsuits because he don't want to come out in the open. If our Secretary of State's had this knowledge for two years and done nothing on it, he don't want it to be carried out. He don't want it to happen. And he says he's going to start implementing these changes after our 2024 election. That means he's had this information for four years and done that with it. He's had four years. We're going to be going through two election cycles. Does he care about election integrity? If he, if he knew this, he does. If you knew Miller this, County legal, they don't have to worry about their conscience. The other county has got to worry about their Yeah, we just say, well, we can't do this, you know. But um, 
But then we will leave it up to him to give us an answer. Why? That's when he, he should give us. Then we could challenge him and say, why not? But we still have to have him address it and let us know we can or we can't. And when he said we can't, then we could ask him, well, let us know why we can't and give us the reason why we can't. But I feel that we still need to go and address it through him. Through the, you well, know what I'm saying? Well, what's the important thing is that you guys and everyone else here in Miller County needs to educate yourself on the law itself. So once you educate yourself on the law, you'll be able to speak to it without a lawyer who's interpreting the law as they see fit from above. So, so knowing what the law is and how it is written is crucial for, I would say, the lay citizen, which would be us, right? So I think that's important. So we can sit back and say, well, what, let's wait for the lawyer. But what, what are you doing? Are you actually looking up the law and actually reading it. I'm going to read the law in a little bit. But that's what we need to do as Georgia citizens is to know what the law is. Um, and I can speak to that in a little bit. I'll, I'll read, read one more paragraph and I'll, I'll leave you all alone. This is not the last. This is in section 1.2. He says, my technical findings leave Georgia voters with greatly diminished grounds to be confident that the votes they cast on the BMDs are secured and that their votes will be counted correctly, or that any future elections conducted using Georgia's universal BND systems will be reasonably secure from attack and produce the correct results. No grand conspiracies would be necessary to commit large-scale fraud, but rather only moderate technical skills of the kind that attackers who are likely to target Georgia's election devices already possess. Unfortunately, even if such an attack never comes, the fact that Georgia's BNDs are so vulnerable is all but certain to be exploited by partisan actors to suppress voter participation and cast doubt on the legitimacy of election results. That's the thing he tells you right there. He says the whole thing is right. And if we don't correct if, if we don't get serious about this, and just, I, I'm not throwing y'all on the bus at all. I, if y'all want to talk to your lawyer, but we've got to go past the point, because I, I believe you already contacted him one time when I first came to talk to y'all. He said, can't do it. We want to know why. Because the Constitution says you can. We, we've got to push back. Whenever our government is doing things that aren't constitutional, it's our job as citizens to push back against the incorrect adaptation of our Constitution. And that's what I'm asking y'all to do. Let's push back. I'm not in an ugly way, but we've got demand to demand that our elected representatives Start here, all the way up to our governor and secretary of state, attorney general, that they adhere to the constitution of Georgia, and that's all that we're asking people to do. I have asked Jerry, you know, head of election, to come up here and give us his opinion about what all this is going on. Can I wait until the rest? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank y'all, Mr. Keith. We we have a new attorney since then. Yeah, we got a new attorney. Oh, okay. okay. Good evening, County Commissioners. My name is Heather Smith, and I am a Miller County resident in the state of Georgia. Uh, thank you for your time and giving um, us, Miller County citizens, time to provide information in regards to our concern of voter integrity. Um, for those who don't know me, um, we're not Miller County, like, born and raised. Uh, my family, we came from California, uh, probably one of the most corrupt states United States. So, trust me, I've I've seen a lot in that state. Um, we uh, went through a mess in 2020 uh, um, with mandates that were not the law, and um, I was part of fighting against that. Um, also, um, fighting against them trying to um, eliminate homeschooling in the state of, of California. So. Um, this is uh, nothing new to me. Another, you know, I didn't expect to come to Miller County and, um, you know, be a voice uh, for the community. But um, I don't have a problem with it because, uh, for me, as um, as Keith mentioned before, this is not um, a Democrat, Independent, Republican um, um, 
stance is it's a citizen. It's an American citizen um, concern. And uh, we have children um, that we hope will not be living under a Venezuela um, that um, could happen with what's going on in the United States. So there's three areas that I would like to cover this evening. And um, Keith um, mentioned them. Um, I'm just going to go a little bit more in detail about it. And that's the Georgia voting law. Um, and that is um, that is under the Georgia section 21-2-300. Um, I'll repeat that again. That is Georgia section 21-2-300. And what that law states is that the equipment must be used in all federal and state and county elections held in Georgia. Okay. Um, but there's a caveat that, that goes with that. It is provided, however, that such electronic ballot markers shall produce paper ballots which are marked with elector choices in a format readable by the elector. So um, I'm going to define for you what, uh, uh, what that electronic ballot marker is. Um, an electronic ballot marker means an electronic device that does not compute or retain votes may in integrate components such as a ballot scanner, printer, touchscreen monitor, audio output, and navigational keypad, and uses electronic technology to independently and privately mark a paper ballot at the direction of an elector. Interpret ballot selections, communicate such interpretation for elector verification, and print an elector verifiable paper ballot. Verifiable paper ballot. And that, that is um, the key there is, um, and I don't think Miller County did this. I actually voted this last election. Like, I, we weren't here um, to vote in 2020. So, um, but what that means is, and I, and I can pass some of this around. Uh, we have these printed out. So when you're printing out your your final tallies, um, it states who you voted for, right? It doesn't tell you your name. It doesn't give all the information. But it states who you voted for, president, vice president, secretary of state, what have you. But then there's the QR code, which um, Sherry will go over in a little bit. Um, the QR code, which is not readable. That is That is something you cannot read. You can read everything else, but all they're scanning is this. They're not scanning, they're not looking over actually who you voted for. No one knows what's in that QR code. No one does. Okay, and as Keith mentioned uh, in this earlier, that it can't be scanned. I can't pull up my phone and take a picture of it or do anything with it because it's I'm not privy to that information. You're not, she's not, he's not, no one's privy to that information. So that is that is where where the law um, comes in is the voter cannot read that, right? So you don't know what's going on. Okay, again, it's a computer system. Okay. So there are issues and vulnerabilities with what is going on with the the Dominion voting system. Again, this is something with, that was going on with the Diebold voting system back during the Bush and Gore election. Okay, um, go look that up. I mean, that's you, you'd be shocked to find out what happened with that. I mean, I was a young voter then. Um, um, you know, there was a lot of mess that went on with that. But back to uh, the Dominion uh, voting system. Um, there, um, as Keith mentioned, there. There was some um, vulnerabilities, and that came out of the Image Cast X. Okay, and the Image Cast X is an accessible ballot marketing device. Okay, that ballot marketing capability, the ballot marketing capabilities allow voters to vote using the accessible tactile interface (ATI), um, sip and pop, or paddle switches. Um, the Dominion Voting System ImageCast X, the touchscreen voting machine, which we've all seen, it can be deployed as either a ballot marking device, which was brought up, BMD, without tabulation capabilities, or a direct recording electronic DRE voting machine. Um, it is mostly commonly deployed, deployed as a BMD um, with an attached commercial off-the-shelf laser printer. So um, 
you know, so what are some of the, the vulnerabilities from that? Um, improper verification of cryptographic signature, okay? An attacker could leverage this vulnerability to install malicious codes, which could be spread to other vulnerable image cast X devices via removable media, okay? In and out, okay? Uh, mutable assertion or measurement reporting data. An attacker could leverage this vulnerability to disguise malicious applications on a device. Hidden functionality. An attacker, an attacker to gain elevated privileges on a device and or install malicious codes. Improper protection of alternate path. Okay, an attacker could leverage this vulnerability <coughs> to escalate privileges on a device and or install malicious code. Path transversal. An attacker could leverage this vulnerability to spread malicious code to image cast X devices from the EMS. Execution with unnecessary privileges. An attacker could leverage this vulnerability to escalate privileges on a device and or install malicious code. Authentication bypassed by spoofing. An attacker with physical access may use this to gain administrative privileges on a device and install malicious code or perform arbitrary administrative actions. Incorrect privilege assignment. An attacker could leverage this vulnerability to gain access to sensitive information and perform privilege actions potentially affecting other election equipment. Origin validation error. An attacker could leverage this vulnerability to print an arbitrary number of ballots without authorization. So those are just a few of the vulnerabilities um, under um, the Dominion, you know, uh, ImageCast um, X firmware and applications. Um, and I'm just going to um, go over to my third point. My third point is, you know, also what Keith mentioned was the Curling versus Rassenberger um, court hearing. And, um, you know, again, there's a lot of information in that. Um, but the court did find that the plaintiffs, which are curling, and there was a few other um, uh, plaintiffs in that, um, have satisfied the first two prerequisites for preliminary, inju preliminary injunctive relief. Plaintiffs have presented enough evidence to establish a substantial likelihood of success on the merits of their claim that the state defendant's use of an arbitrary threshold on its ballot scanners to discard border ballot markings for specific candidates or initiatives that are obvious to the human eye results in a violation of the fundamental right of each voter to have his or her vote accurately recorded and counted. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, again, I'm coming here as, you know, a concerned citizen. Um, you know, we left California for a, probably a lot of obvious reasons and we came out here to the state of Georgia. And, um, you know, um, you know, as citizens, we are we're, we we try to be really, really involved in our community, and um, you know, we integrity. That's all. That's all we're asking for is voter integrity. And um, again, I will challenge um, you know, our our county commissioners. You know, do your due diligence. Look into the law yourselves. And ask questions. Ask someone outside our, our county lawyer um, and bring forth that information. So when that comes up, that we can't do it, you can be able to say, well, this is, we can't because this is X, Y, and Z. Um, I think that um, the citizens of Miller County would um, would appreciate that, um, you know, in that regard. So I don't know if you guys have any questions. That I cannot read. That's right. Right. Yeah. It, right. That is the law. You have to be able to read with your own eyeballs what that is, and a QR code cannot be read unless you scan it. And we don't have we don't have the ability to do that. We don't have the ability. The people above there have the ability. Right. Thank you. Here's a QR code. You can take your phone, you can scan that. If you go vote, you're not going to be able to read that. Right. 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 Right.
try to scan that thing with your phone. You're not even allowed to have a phone, which is a good idea because people can get on that phone and manipulate those machines without you knowing it. And that's a good reason why we don't take the phones in there. But we need to... I, I worked, Jerry, Jerry let me work with him. And um, anyway, at the end of the thing, I would have to sign these little ticker tapes. You know, a truth to say that I believe this is, um, these votes were accurate and all that. For me to put my name on that from 2020, that really bothered me when I find out all this stuff. Because it lays on me, it lays on Jerry and Josh. It makes us like we're the one. And I have heard people community people don't fuss about it. Say, well, they did something wrong that the machines is causing us. I said, no, we did the best we could. I can vouch on that. But my name is on that ticket. If they did a court case or somebody does a court case, we could be in trouble saying we are part of And think the state of, uh, Secretary of State is going to back me up. He ain't going to back me up because he's the one that screwed it up anyway. <laughs> you know? So, they're, they're breaking laws, and they're going to make us look bad. I mean, it's bad that Josh, he's supposed to be a probate judge, and be over elections, and every, and I used to work, I volunteer with voter GA, every supervisor, it was just too much for them. They didn't even know, they, they didn't know what was going on. One lady says, the machine's back there, I can't get the open records, I don't know how to do it. I had to have the Dominion man do it. He's, I don't even know what he did. And most of those open records I got were deleted. Or when they went back and audited, boy, they deleted the first ones. There was some hoo-doing going on. So y'all can pretend like it's not. I know those are the lawyers. They, they, they know their laws, but somebody's breaking some laws. And I don't want to be responsible for it. And my name's on them tickets. His name is, and I know he ain't crooked, and I know Josh ain't crooked. We all know each other. But it's going to come down to that to each county. I mean, each county, the supervisor are just as like I am about it. And somebody's going to have to stand up and have some balls and stand up against these bullies. And they're bullying us. That's what they're doing. Using all their legal things. And they used to do that with Voter J when I did open records. The county had their county attorneys called uh, Rapture, and they'd give them a law and quote it back to me. Well, Voter J's got some real good lawyers. They're really into the election thing. I came back with them laws. They said, well, they told the county, you better give her those stuff because she, she got her stuff backed up. So y'all do, like she says, those laws, we need to learn them laws. Because Rapture is not, and Garland was saying, most of them lawyers that Rapture talks to, it's not even got nothing to do with elections. They, they're just sort of like doing like you do in your Bible. You sort of um, paraphrase and don't, you know, take it out of context. Well, they're taking a lot of these laws and they quote out of context. They don't even have nothing to do with elections. That, that's from my own experience when I was dealing with them. So, I have a question for you. So yeah. can a uh, uh, voter GA come and do uh, a presentation down they there? They did. They oh, did. They, yeah, they talked they, to Garland. Oh, they did? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, but they oh. did it through the Zoom call. Zoom call. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. When did they do that? Well, it, well, was it last year? Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe yeah. we need a refresher. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm just saying, like, so that there would be more, I guess, more education and more support in that regard. I don't know. Um, it's just an idea. But I mean, you really don't need to educate. I mean, if everybody sees it in the paper, and everybody well, knows, the the terms. knows that the, the dominions are not. It's up and up. I mean, it's just public knowledge. The whole country knows that all this stuff has been, you know, screwed up. And then somebody just do like our. Back in the revolution, they start standing up against these people because all they're going to do is going to take over our country. That's what they're doing, and we're not going to have a say at all. We're going to start putting people in there we don't want. Y'all, they'll put some people and take y'all out. It can come to that point, and we need to stand up. One thing I'd like to say before I'm, this is the last thing I promise y'all this is the last thing I'm going to say is uh, we're not throwing rocks at Judge Josh, Commissioner Jerry, or none of them. It's all this stuff that's going on is way above all of our pay grades. This is coming from the top, and that's what's making it so hard to root out. Is it's coming from so up top, and they they've got things entrenched to protect themselves. Uh, you know, if you're Secretary of State, you have got hundreds of lawyers. Mellon County, guess how many we got? I reckon we got one. I mean, <laughs> we got one. And and I don't. I'm not throwing rocks to y'all, at Judge Josh, Mr. Jerry. That anything I've asked them, they've been able backwards to help you get information. 
I want y'all to be sure that I'm not saying anybody locally is doing anything because we're we're at the bottom of the hill. You know what runs downhill and we get hit with it right now, but we got to fight against it to find the truth out. And, and that's all that any of us have spoke tonight, or lots of folks here is here with us tonight. We want the truth to come out. Whether it's our vote, what the law actually says, and let's apply that law as it was written. No matter who's doing what, if our Secretary of State is telling his lawyers to say what ain't right, guess what? We can correct that. And that's what I'm asking y'all to do. If it, if it takes us, if the county commissioners to vote to let us do away with that, and it and it starts a lawsuit, that's okay. Because we, we've got to get, this is important enough that I think a lawsuit is warranted because we've got, as the state of Georgia, and our citizens, the state of Georgia ain't Atlanta. The state of Georgia ain't the Secretary of State. The state of Georgia is each one of our individual citizens that are out here that are working every day, that are paying our taxes, that are cashing our votes, and that are trusting that our votes are counted. And if those votes aren't counted correctly, by if it's incompetence or if it's straight up trying to be crooked, we need to find out and correct it and, and go from there. Because I don't, I don't know what none of y'all know if y'all can see yourself Democrat or Republican, and it don't matter to me a bit. I just want these votes counted correctly, and I, I don't think our local people were involved in nothing. I, I I, I seriously think that 99% of our problems comes from Atlanta, the direction they're trying to go. And we just, we've got to find out exactly what's going on and how we can correct this legally to where people can get confidence. And if we keep, if we keep the Dominion machines for three or four more cycles, you might have to work behind them technician because ain't going to nobody vote on them. That, that's the way it's going. And I think that's what they want. Well, they can just get the people that are radical to vote, and they can get their way, and it'll be like Miss Heather said, like Venezuela is now, where that can't ever happen here. The stuff that's going on now, we didn't think it happened here neither. So, thank y'all for your time. Thank y'all for listening to us. We got several folks here that are that are uh, backing us up, and um, we're gonna trust that y'all do the right thing. And if, if you want to get that attorney, I, I prefer y'all vote five vote or nine. Let's go ahead and do it, and then talk to the attorney. That's what my preference is. If y'all be honest about it, that's what I. That's what that's why I'm telling it, you. It's come to the time where we got to do something, and, and I agree that you know a year ago we talked to the attorney then. I, I think Duke said we got a different attorney now. So that's great, but every fact that's uncovered leads to. Stinkier and stinkier facts that some cover. And sometimes it takes a, a moment to say, let's draw a line and saying we're going to vote and we're going to find out. When we vote, we'll, we'll find out what's going on then because we'll get some attention. We, we can find out what's really going on. Fallen County's already done it. They're supposed to vote again. The, their other board tomorrow night. And the, they say they got the votes to, to pass that one. We'll see about that. But, you know, I would really like to be able to vote when we see what it, what it does. Again, but Gary, what do you come up with? Well, I, I appreciate the concerns. You know, everybody has. Uh, the board commissioners hired me as election superintendent to run elections in Miller County. And what we do in Miller County is we have to follow state law, and it's state law that we have to use to win the vote. There's no way around that. Even though the state law is against what the Constitution says? No, ma'am, that's not the state law. Did this state the reason no other counties are doing it is because it's cut and dry. You say it's going to happen? That's fine. I, I, can't, I can't say that it's not going to happen. But so far, every county in Georgia uses this equipment because of state law. Now, this is just my personal opinion. If they want to sue the state, that's fine with me, but I don't want Miller County involved in it because my taxes are high enough as it is now. <laughs> One county has tried paper ballots. Athens Clark County, March 2020. If you don't believe me, you can Google it. State election board came in the next day and said, you're not going to do this. They fined $2,000. And they said, if you use these machines, if you don't put these machines out for the balance of this election, it's going to be $5,000 a day. Guess what happened? And 
Nobody voted on paper ballots. They've written that, they've written that in the state law. That's just the way it is. Now, if y'all want to do that, that's fine. I, you know, I understand their concerns, but you're going to have to sue the state of Georgia. It's not anything that y'all can decide. Mr. Josh, you got anything to add? Essentially, just what he said, um, there are, I, I think it's been misquoted a few times and not saying the Constitution. So it's, it's actually in the official code of Georgia annotated, the uh, code section that Mr. Keith quoted. I've, I've read that as well, just Bowen. Um, there's also a code section that says you have to abide by what the Secretary of State decides on. Um, we we have gotten direction from the Secretary of State, and I understand your concerns with what the reasons they might answer the way they answer. Um, I do agree with Mr. Jerry that <clears throat> this decision would ultimately culminate in a lawsuit. Um, none of my personal opinions are in anything I'm saying right now. Okay, um, this is just how I think. Uh, the law reads, and I personally, regardless of how I feel, think the law reads that until there's some court decision made or some law that comes out that we have to use it. That's, that's just my opinion. Um, I don't know if you've got any specific questions for me. I'll try to answer them. Uh, there is a, did you bring the actual 21 code that I'm referring to? Um, well, it's 21, it's 21 to 300 and something um, that says you'll use what the Secretary of State mandates. Um, and again, I know there is this other code section that says if they're impractical or impossible that you can use paper ballots. Now, I don't know what the spirit of that law was when it was put into effect. I can guess that it might be, um, you know, if, the, if there's a power outage or something. <clears throat> they might have meant this, but the issue with that is I think that would need to be litigated, and I think a court would have to say, yes, in this particular case, with whether you're talking about the QR code or, or whatever they brought up here, I think a court would need to say, ultimately, whether it's Miller County or another county, that yes, that language does mean that can apply here or it doesn't. But I think it's pretty ambiguous right now as to whether that applies or not. That's just my opinion. Any y'all got any comments? But, you know, this is not... Oh, uh, one more thing. I do want to clarify something. Um, Mr. Keith, because you mentioned it, I'm... I'm not over elections anymore. I, I'm here because I ran every election up to this point. If there's any questions, I want to be able to <clears throat> help Mr. Jerry out with the answers. Um, he, he's over elections. He's the election superintendent. And then there's the elections board. So I'm, I'm, I just want to clear that up. I'm not, I'll, help, I'll still help you in any way you want. If we're talking about past elections, still call me, email me, whatever. But going forward, it should be just a, yeah, we're not ruling out this one so well. Could I say something yes. about the program scheme? Uh, I know y'all hire a convenient technician, right? Uh, we have in the past, but we're trying to get away. Okay. 2020, four years ago, we had 2,635 absentee ballots in Great County. Secretary of State's office allowed us to start counting them ahead of time seven days ahead of time. <clears throat> As county chairman, I was allowed to be there. The Democrat chairman was allowed to be there so that we could educate any votes that came up. And the first night, we got 50 votes counted. How are we going to get them on count? The next day, we come in, and the Dominion technician had worked on the software. But the problem was, you know how people write in people? Mickey Mouse or whatever in some races, it was stopping the machine right there. And we had to look at it on a computer screen and say, yeah, mark that one out. So I can't. The technician 
fixed it so that it would skip those. It wouldn't slow us down. So I'm going to myself. If he can do that, he can tell that same software for every vote that you get, count three of them to this other guy who's running against you. Or the same thing when you rather for his opponent. If it's a vote for his opponent, every third one for his opponent counted for revenue from. I don't trust him. I don't trust the machine. My wife and I vote absentee ballot. It's on a paper ballot. And I encourage everybody to do that as long as we have the main machine. You say you're from Grady County? Yes. Or are they, what are they, are they considering to do all this? Today. We're meeting with the Board of Elections tomorrow night. There's, there's a lot of county work. So if we if we legally can't go to the paper ballots, we could encourage our citizens though to vote absentee. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, we bring it that day, but not, not before, before. We bring the day of the election. Because mm -hmm. they, they have an idea of how many coming in, you already count like in the bigger towns. Mm -hmm. They'll throw some in on the, the machines. That's what we've been doing since all this came out. We, we request an absentee ballot, get in the mail, mark it, but then carry it the day of the year, period. It's, it's how we <coughs> don't use the machines anymore. Um, that, that's what we've been, for our own peace of mind, that's what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. so there, there is a workaround, but then what we're proposing will be to be widespread, you know, to make it where, where no one has to vote on the machine. Like, like the other states, like they said in that report, most states have we vote on paper or request a machine if you don't want to, if you're, if you're handicapped or something. Georgia's one of the only states that says vote on machines the whole day. And, and that's, where, that's where it's at. I mean, you know, if, if we don't have confidence in our elections, you know, it's we just want to get back. And I, and I agree with Judge Josh. It's going to come down to a lawsuit. Somebody versus the state of Georgia. Some county where it's, it's going to have to. But if, if, if we're too concerned to take that step, you know, that, that, that's what I'm getting to. Somebody's got, got, to, somebody got to be the first domino. And when the first one falls, there's going to be many more. It's probably going to be more than one county. It might be three or four counties versus state of Georgia. It might be a hundred counties versus the state of Georgia, but the one county has got to do it. And if, uh, if his eye as a voter or you as a voter cannot know what's in that QR code and what's going to be read from that, if I can't know that, you can't know it from your ballot, how can it be lawful to use those machines. Wouldn't it be an a, a, a easy, well, I don't know how easy of a solution it would be, but ideally it would be great for them to attach a scanner that we can, that before we place our ballot in the scanner, that we can check that QR code ourselves. So for them to attach a, which. You know, you know I have to check the QR code. It lists how to do the but their yeah, concern is, 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 is it honest? Yeah. I, I can't comment on that. So, so that's what that's what their concern I, I think is. I, it's I, the, I would like right. to add though, um, in the past, at least over elections, we have done hand counted audits here in Miller County too. Um, just because we I guess have the numbers, we can still do that. I know they can't do that in Atlanta or Columbus or whatever, but we do bring poll workers back in to hand count races to make sure they coincide with what we see. Um, I do want to be clear on that. We do do that. And has everything been, been close too, hasn't it? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> we do that. If you think, oh, it's going to be done every time. That's the way Spalding County did. They and they come up with several more. The supervisor got upset, and she turned that in to Brad, and he ain't done nothing in how many years. And so that's the reason why Spalding gets to go in the paper ballot, and that's the reason why they voted five years. They 
Okay, that's what's going on. Yeah. Now, one thing that the big push with the electronic vote was we can know the vote count quicker. And if y'all noticed the last few election cycles, it takes weeks to know the count. So if that's one of the big things to get to know it quicker, it ain't working. It ain't. It ain't you're backing it up, you know. So that, that's one. That's another thing, you know. It ain't rocket science, and and, and it might not be correct. But the longer you drag it out, the more it gives the appearance that there can be some kind of hanky panky going on. So that when you drag it out longer, it, it, it might not be legitimate with those thoughts in your mind. That if you're going to drag it out, do you keep counting up to get somebody who you want to win? And, you know, I, I for me as a, as a citizen, as a voting citizen, I see no positives for us to keep using the Dominion machines that would make me. Happy, happy, joy, joy about it. All I see is negatives to keep using them. It, it doesn't, it's taking longer and longer to count votes. You don't know for, instead of having an election day, now you got an election two months. So you have early vote, and then you cut early voting off, and you have the absentee vote, and then you have the day of vote. And then it, it, you know, I'm, I'm old school. I like election day. I <laughs> not really, I, I like that, but then I, that's not the law now. We've got all this other stuff, and okay. Let's just do it when we have confidence in it. Just because you got election month, don't need, need, need to take you a whole other month after that to get votes counted. Well, how long, how long did it take? You know, you're saying that they had the, the machine, they used the machines, and then they went back and hand counted them. How long did it take to hand count those votes? Now, hand count is what they call an audit, and it's after the election. All you're doing there is just verifying your results. It's, it's a few days after. Now, there is a law. Um, I'm not going to say it's complied with in bigger counties, um, but you have to have your results by, it was 10 p.m. up until these last elections, and we've always been under that in Miller County. We have 6,000 people here. Um, normally, I have the results sent into the state by around 9, 9.30. Now they've changed the law. It's 11.59 p.m. Um, for the next election coming up. Now, I know they're saying weeks later we still don't have results, and that's true. It's, it's not here in Miller County, but I, I'm guessing in Fulton and some of the big ones, they're not getting their results in by that code section. Mm -hmm. But there what, is a law on the books. I think what Ms. Christine was asking, when you recounted those hand ballots, how the time frame that it took you to actually recount them when y'all did the hand recount? The hours? It depends on what race you have to look at and how, how big the election is. So I, I would I would vary. I would venture to guess an average of a couple hours. Can't we just listen to get everybody to do the absentee? Can't we just, you know, America's always been one that don't can always get around stuff. Get around that law. Still have the machines, but and, and encourage people instead to come go to the paper and, and just we have an appearance state that the machines are there. Everybody do the paper. I think y'all well. can encourage them. Huh? I think no, y'all can. Have, I think y'all can. I don't know that we can, but I think right. y'all can. Right. Mm -hmm. You are going to be uh, laying on the results if y'all are going to go on paper ballots here. <laughs> well, they're supposed to not. They're doing it uh, at Spalding County. You want to show them how long it takes to do paper count and paper ballots. If the state tells me it's okay, I'm gonna do that. But until they do, we're gonna keep on doing this. So everyone, we appreciate y'all's concern and the input. And I said we've got to check into this thing and make sure that we are 100 legal on whatever we do. You know, and we we do appreciate it. We're not taking it off the table. No, it's not off the table. We just got to make sure that we do things right and correct. I have no problem with this. I'm just going to ask y'all again if he says no, try to, let's try to go one step past that and ask him why. And if his answer is because the Secretary of State said so, why? Mr. Douglas, you got a few minutes in the morning. I'll meet with you and let's make some phone calls. Yep. All right. I'll see you then about 9 o'clock. Right. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll move on here to the next one is old business. Fueling Center Report.
it's pretty much running the same. We actually met today with the Board of Education, and I believe they're going to sign on with us. Everything else is doing good. good. We are up to a semi and a half a month now, so it's probably going to be closer to two if they come on. What were we using at first? Uh, the first mile, we were buying about 8,000 gallons a month. Now it's about 12,000. This is, uh, this is the next thing you got. It's going to make it. that one? Let me get it. Is that one's going to be Let me get it for you. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because you'll need to read that out loud. Oh. You'll need to read it. Yeah. That's the yeah, this is the red that's, that's the one we'll sign. Okay, next on the agenda mm -hmm. is the spending resolution dash zero seven two zero two three dash. I mean, dot one, pages 10 through 11, spending resolution here, dash 072023.0 for Miller County, Georgia. Whereas the Miller County Board of Commissioners has not formally adopted a budget for the year beginning July 1, 2023, and ending June the 30th, 2024, and whereas the Miller County Board of Commissioners has studied and revised a proposed budget and is in the process of budget procedures and hearings. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Miller County Board of Commissioners operating under the FY 22-23 budget until such time as the FY 23-24 operating budget is adopted, be it further resolved that this, that should say this, should it? This resolution is to be made a part of the minutes of the regular session meeting on July 10, 2023. So be it resolved, this 10th day of July 2023. So we need a motion to adopt this spending resolution until we can get all this other stuff straightened out on the. So moved. Do we have a second? Hi, second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Right, go ahead and sign it here. Do it. Road paving bids. Pages 12 through 15. So, Mr. Allen, I actually got an updated uh, quote from Oxford. They did change it from uh, Grenfell Bridge to Grenfell, so okay. we are good on that. So we need to go ahead and uh, approve this. Go ahead and move on forward with our payment projects. Yes, sir. they were the only ones that actually put in. Okay. Yeah, I we're the only one to turn the bid in. So do we have a motion to proceed forward and me sign the contracts? Go ahead and get this paper started. I'll make it. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, All right. Motion carried. Enter governmental agreement to collect city taxes. Pages 16 through 20. This is a contract, I guess, that Jennifer, the tax commissioner, and the city sign every year. We have to sign it because you guys are the government authority. So it just basically gives her the authority to collect the taxes for the city. Correct. So do we have a motion to approve that, move forward, and sign that agreement? I make I make a motion. We have a second? I second. All in favor? Aye. Motion carried. Aspire Board reappointment, Ms. Darlene Cox, pages 21 through 22. We got a motion to put it back on there again. I'll make a motion. I'll have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion carried. Health Department lease agreement, pages 23 to 26. I actually got an updated one where they corrected your name. <clears throat> We need a motion to go ahead and approve that lease to them. I'll make a motion. We have a second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Beer and wine license, quick place. He's already done all the paperwork through the sheriff's office and everything, so we need a, we haven't got one place left like yet, so we got a motion to <laughs> approve his beer and wine license. I'll make a motion. We have a second. I second. All in favor? Aye. Motion carried. 
Department, Road Department Office Air Conditioner. Um, their air conditioner is pretty much about 20 years old. It's, it's, it's actually too small for the building. So uh, Andy and Shelly contacted me and so we went ahead and got three quotes. I've, I've got the quotes in there. Um, one from Seminole Electric in Donaldsonville, one's for, from Cockle uh, Conditioner, and the other is from Mr. Bruce Henry. And it looks like Seminole's actually came in as the lowest bid. Okay, my, my recommendation is we go with the lower bid. Now what you'll see, let me I'll tell you, yeah. you'll see a bid for 6300 but but Andy, am I correct in saying that he did not want to do the duck work? That's right. So that's not duck yeah. work. And they actually, me and Andy looked at it, they do need duck work because it's exposed overhead. So. But the other two bids are for duck work. And I think he said he didn't want to do it or something like that. So, so it comes <clears> in <throat> then that some of the electric has yes. a little bid on doing a complete job, correct? Right. Right, I recommend that we go with some low electric and air conditioning. Do we have a motion to approve it? And we'll take it out of uh, this bill. Uh, 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 <laughs> we have a motion. I didn't promise my boy to do it, but too proud. What is it, lady? I've just been pricing air conditioners for the school lately. They just seem really high for a two ton. But they seem high. They seem high. Well, do y'all want to let's look at getting more bids in before we make a move? I would say let's get a bid from somebody else. All right. You got anybody in mind? Uh, I know Cooper and Bainbridge. Who? Cooper, Heating and Cooling and Bainbridge. All right, y'all didn't want to put it on the table to get more bids. Is that correct? Well, I mean, I, okay. want to, I, I want to get it pretty quick, though. I don't want them to burn up down there. I just. Mm, no. I mean, if you want me to go ahead and get bids and just kind yeah, of. Yeah, they'll probably give it to you. Just send it out to you guys, and you can actually uh, vote to do it then, and then we'll do it informally at the next meeting. Yes. Okay. So I'll reach on out to the ones in Bainbridge as well. Okay. Okay, Andy, you got your own room to park? You got anything? Um, out on Enterprise Road. We got a spot on the Enterprise. Um, I think Doug went and looked at it too, but it's where they built a tower out there. Yeah. They put in a very, very wide driveway there, but the pipe that they put in is not handling the water right there. And we get these big flash flood rains, that water is actually getting over in the road. We're going to have to see about that. Yeah, it's flooding the road out. That's, that's your district lady, but you know, I'm just saying it's, that. It's right it. before you get to Newberry Chambers. It's at the preacher's house, right in front of the preacher's house right there. Mm -hmm. um, Just every time it rains. I got Doug to go out there and look at it because I found the pipe and got it to actually open up because there's rocks and stuff washed off in front of it. But it just, they put in a small plastic pipe. And that is, it just floods right there when we get a big rain. That water just rushes right there. And the water will be that deep across Enterprise Road, and it's a pretty wide section. And I, we're going to have to address that problem. Either the people that put in the driveways going to have to buy a pipe, or the county going to have to buy one. But we can't continue to let that be in the shape that it's in because it's getting more and more regular. That. But you know who that I think I think you went out there and saw it too, didn't you? I sat there two hours. Yeah. Like that with you. I mean, it, it's, it's, it, it, and it's getting way more frequent. We've dealt with it a little in the past, but these, we're getting a little more water coming there a little faster, seems like. And it is just, it's flooding that road. And it's, you know, I mean, it's a bad, it's really a bad spot. We're going to have to put in some more pipe right there, or either the folks that put in that tower is one, because that's they put in that driveway. I mean, I've, I, I, I think Doug was going to kind of try to look up and see who might own that. It says it's out of Quincy, so I've got to make contact with him. But I, I think it's, it's some of the farmers around here. I don't know why they got a Havana address. It's a Havana address, actually. I'll tell you in just a minute. John Weaver farmed the land there. Yeah. And Tommy yeah. and Chuck, you can own the land. Okay. And, uh, they probably got the lease to the tower. tower. It's so the main tower. Yeah. Probably Georgia Power. It, it was a construction driveway, and I know Jeff, he probably knows what I'm talking about. When a company like that comes and puts in a driveway, they have certain things they have to do with gravel and things like that. So evidently the tower people put it in, it's not, 
you know, a farmer didn't do it or we didn't do it. It's, it's somebody put in a construction driveway and it has to be that tower. But um, I, the, I saw the pipe at night and I didn't go back the next day because I opened it up that night. And it looked like to me it was just an 18 inch black piece of plastic pipe. And it just, it will not help the water. Uh, I don't know that a 24 with that 18 would handle the amount of water that's coming there. Now, if I was going to do it, I'd probably just go ahead and put in a 36. And it's about 40 something feet wide. I mean, it's, you take two pieces of pipe and do it. Um, it's a very wide drive. They built a real wide driveway right there. What kind of cost you look at it? That's probably going to be $800 a piece. You know, something like that. I had not just priced one lately, but that's what I did. About eight or nine hundred dollars. Yeah, that yeah, well, yeah, we'd have to have a sand. That's only a, whatever a foot of pipe costs is what charge for the band. You're looking at probably two thousand dollars. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'd like to reach out and see if they might address it before the county did. But if if that somebody's on address it, we either got to take that driveway out or we got to put some pipes in one or two because we can't let it stay there. John, using that driveway. I. Mr. Jimmy, I know more about that than I do. I just know it's got to be more and more frequent that when we get these big rains. Oh, it's very dangerous. It's not just a little water in the road. It's still got to be, it's, it's just about as long as the preacher's yard right there. And, it, and it's, it gets about that deep. It's plenty of water to. Send a little so car off in the ditch. Would y'all want us to try to contact the people who put the driveway in there and see if they want to pay for it, or do you want to go ahead? Yeah, I would find out who the tower, who owns that tower, and just tell them we have trouble with it. Right. That's the people that's okay. ultimately to be in charge. Right. Bill, can you handle that? That's the difference. And you got anything else? No, I would just like to say that. It, it don't get much higher than that, about 88 degrees in the office anymore. So we'll work on it tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, Doug, Doug's actually been down there and seen that. I mean, it's pretty warm. The insulation in the walls is just over the years has gone away, and now the building's not it's not insulated like it was. I mean, the insulation's all that fell to the floor. And the little air conditioner's running hard every day, but when it's hot, it's about 80, 88 degrees, about 88 degrees in the office all day long. We'll get work on the ball. Mm -hmm. Anybody here? No, I don't have any. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Anybody else? Yeah. 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 Yeah.